Hello, welcome to Artistic Adventures, and we're going to continue our Blythe customization project. This is part seven, and we're going to start working on the costume. We're going to do a little bit of it, and then we're going to follow up in another video and complete it with all the accessories. We're back with part seven of our steampunk series. We finished uh, our doll's hair and put her face back together, and right now I've just got it clipped back in a clip because I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to do with it so far, but uh, we're going to start working on clothes today, and as we, we said in the beginning, I, I was really uh, sort of prompted to do steampunk when I bought this cool coat that uh, has some kind of steampunk detail. Uh, some studs and it's leather and all that. Well, it's fake leather. And uh, I wanted to go ahead and put it on. I'm trying to get inspiration. I, I went ahead and popped her hands off since we're going to be putting things on and off. And it's easier with the hands off because the fingers are like, ah, and catch on everything. The other thing we have is uh, the boots. So these are also going to be part of the costume. So I thought I'd go ahead and just sort of put a couple things on her and uh, decide. There's, you know, several ways to go with steampunk. I mean, there's dresses, there's you know, short dresses, long dresses, there's pants, there's, <laughs> you know, there's just all kinds of things. But uh, I had these cute little stockings that I bought uh, from, I can't even remember who now, somebody on either Etsy or, or Ally. So I thought I would just want to see how these look on her with the boots. I like the pattern. I think the pattern is very steampunky. As you can see it's kind of a ribbed uh, fishnet kind of look. So let's see if we can get a boot on her. I may have to take these buckles off. I'm not sure if it'll just slip on. I think it will. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Alright, let's go ahead and put the other one on. Is it kind of cute? I love it. I love it. I love the little shoes and all the little accessories. I don't necessarily want to make the little, little, little things, but they're very cute. Like these stockings, you know, for me to make them, buy the stuff and make them, I could just as soon buy them from somebody else who maybe enjoys making little tiny things. Alright, so let's let's get her other boot on. And we'll see how she looks at this point. This one's not cooperating as much. There we go. Alright, so we got we got boots, stockings, and if I can raise this up a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. So the thing with this outfit using this coat is uh, if I do a short dress it's going to be mostly covered up by the coat. Um, we could, cut, I guess, do a long dress, but then we're going to cover up part of the boots. So, you know, the thing with this coat is sort of reminding me of uh, maybe a airship pirate or, you know, not so much the ladylike steampunk look. So, maybe what I'm going to do is like a bustier here and then maybe some jodhpurs. Jodhpurs, you know, where the pants are wider here. And then they come down more narrow. Maybe we'll have them end a little high so we can still see the stockings. Hmm, interesting concept. We wouldn't really need a bustle, but the nice thing about that is that we could do, you know, maybe uh, an, something here to attach to the side of her leg with a steampunk pistol or, or something like that. I also could shorten this coat a little bit. It's not hemmed. So think about that and uh, gather some materials and I'll be right back. So I did find a couple of things uh, I'm going to use that are already made. First of all, some panties so we can cover up her 
under parts <laughs> and I found this uh, white shirt because I don't really want to make a white shirt and what I think I'm going to do is a, it's a leather um, cincher around her waist and then uh, a skirt that's kind of short in the front and then gets longer in the back because I think what I'm going to do at this point is cut this coat off about right here cut about an inch of it off so it's not so long and I think then the short skirt will work because I kind of just love how those little stockings look <laughs> I love how they look with the boots so that's the deal so far and I just braided her hair in the back because it's getting them away had a couple other things I think I'll use uh, bought these knives a while back little miniature knives you just never know when you're gonna need a miniature knife and then when I need them, it takes a long time to get them from the shipping. Oh, how do you get these things open? Oh my gosh, this is crazy. I'm going to cut the end off with my sewing scissors that used to be sewing scissors and are now not sewing scissors. Okay, so I've got these two kind of knives and I'm thinking, I don't know, that's kind of cool. Well, I'll use one of them. I'm going to put those over here. And the other thing I have is this sword. Uh, the company that I get a lot of this stuff is called More, M More's, M More's More. <laughs> it's on eBay. M O R E Z M O R E. Anyway, they got so many kinds of miniatures. Um, so I got this sword that. It's kind of cool. I think I can make use of. She looks like a buccaneer. And came with this tiny little, some kind of little paintbrush. I don't know if I'll use that, but I'll put it over there. The other thing was I came with, I got, bought these little uh, frames for a pocket watch. But it didn't have the face in it, so I just printed it out on paper. I, I measured it so I, I just printed out the right size. I just used some uh, photo editing software uh, on my Mac. It's called Pixelmator. And uh, cut it out and then glued it in there. So I got a little tiny pocket watch to use. Uh, some other things that I'm going to use I pulled out. I don't know exactly how yet, maybe, but I got some tiny buckles, all kinds of tiny buckles. Some a uh, little bit larger gear type clockwork parts. Got some brads in different colors. Some silver ones and some dark brown ones. Uh, oh, even got some gold ones. I forgot I had those, but are really brass, I guess. Then I've got some chain in here. You gotta have chain with steam pumps, so we're gonna have that. Uh, I've got some leather strips. It's just like leather lacing, leather strips, and oh, maybe I'll need a little bottle, maybe some poison or something that she carries with her. <laughs> okay. Anyway, those are just things that I'm I'm gonna maybe incorporate, and I just want to have them close. I pulled out some fabric. I've got some net, some netting. That's gonna be possible. I have this piece of old lace that I've been dying to use for something. That looks kind of steampunky. I've got some old black lace. It's stretchy. Um, a couple more pieces of black material. This is kind of a thin piece. I don't know. Anyway, um, that's what we're looking at right now. The next thing I want to do... Oh! I forgot I have this gun. This is like pieces that you pop out ooh, and put together. Oh look, it's even got a, a clip to put in it. Huh, so uh, I'm going to kind of look at that see how we put that together. That also came from More is More. More is More. I get it now. More is More. Does that really go? Oh, yeah. That really goes in there. Huh. Alright, I'm going to set that aside with my other weapons because we'll have to do some steampunkery to them. And the other thing is, I cut this out. I didn't have clear. I This is a piece of plastic. Um, a lot of times you can get the, just like you ordered something. Well, 
like this. This is just a package that has clear plastic. If you got one that's big enough, uh, you can use that or that you're not using. Uh, these I'm not going to cut up, but I want to make lenses for some goggles. But I want them to be green. So I got my markers here. I'm going to see if I can make these more green. And I don't, I don't know if I need to use a lighter green or a darker green. So I'm going to try. I tried a couple different things. So I kind of like maybe a little bit darker. So I'm gonna try this color. Oh, I keep using the wrong end. That doesn't look good at all. Alright, I don't like that. Let's see what this looks like. Put that on top of that. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so you can do this with clear. I'm doing it with the blue, but it, it's still going to turn it green. So, as long as you got something semi-compatible, I think it, it'll work. You can turn it green by just using a marker we'll let it dry and then we'll cut out some round pieces as the lenses for our goggles and hopefully that will work of course if you have green plastic already that'd be perfect Alright, I'm going to kind of set that aside for right now, out of the way. So I think the first thing I'll do is to use some of this material to make sort of an underskirt because I think I'm going to use this lace on top of it. So I want to gather this so that the, la you know, the lace is not opaque. Actually, I don't even know if that's going to be thick enough. Mm. A couple other pieces of things over here. Oh, I have some black leather I'll use for the hat. Maybe this would work better. This is like... Uh, Well, that's not really that opaque either. I have all these odds and ends of material that I've picked up at like uh, thrift stores and things where you get like a pet, like something like that for 50 cents or something. So I have all kinds of different material. I apparently don't have what I want. So now this is thicker. It's not it doesn't have any body to it. Actually, that might work better. I'm going to just uh, roll this back up. Let's take a look at this. This, I think, was a, actually a scarf that I got for like a buck. Oh, I didn't even know it had that design on it. Look at all the surprises you get. <laughs> so let's say if I did like a gathered underskirt out of this and then I could put this on top of it and I'd have this stick out from underneath yeah that might look kind of cool hmm yeah interesting okay oh I have some black leather here that I can make a, a top hat out of so that's going to come in good use. And maybe use that for the goggles also. Alright. So I think the first thing I'll do is go ahead and make the underskirt. And I'm not going to use this uh, fringed bottom. I don't think. I don't think that's very steampunky. 
for some reason I just don't think it is. Okay, now I have to get my real sewing scissors because those scissors are dull. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right, I'm just going to cut a piece of this off so I can see how much I need. I'm not really trying to be too careful. Just want to get it off of this bigger piece. That should be plenty. Don't you love that sound? Whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> then there's this sound. You're grinding. <laughs> it's because I messed them up. So I would like to have part of this hang down in the back too. So let's see how tall she is. She's, she's tall. Alright, so I think the first thing I'll do is I'm going to cut this straight. My camera cut off while I was working, but what I came up with is the front part I want to have allow about three inches. So that allows for me to double over the waist and hem the skirt. So that's three inches. And then we'll have it come down in the back to about four and a half inches. So I've doubled this over because I want the front part to not have a seam. So this is the double part. Let's turn the camera down a little bit so we can see as we cut. All right, so get this even. So this will be the waist up here. Still kind of uneven. So this is the waist, so we come down three inches, which is here. Now we're going to have to allow enough to gather, so I'm going to allow about three times the width of what I really want. And then I'm going to start slowly angling down. So when I get to the part that will be the back, will have a seam. It'll be four and a half inch, so that would be about right here. So I'm going to just kind of level off. Alright, so I know this sounds weird. Everything I do, I'm sure it sounds weird, but this is just how I do it. Because um, I kind of just see it in my head. I don't have a pattern. I don't use patterns too much. I just like to kind of make things. Okay. So. This will be the front, over here. We're going to gather up at the waist, and so eventually 
you know, it's going to look like that. And it'll come down in the back to here. That's the plan. All right. So I'm going to go over to my sewing machine. I'm going to unfold this. And we're going to run a gathering thread along the top of here so that we can then, what we'll do is fold that gather down and sew over it to secure it. Okay? So hang tight. All right, I've put the gathering thread in, as you can see. So now what we need to do is pull one of the strings and we'll gather this up and then see how wide it needs to be. I'm going to gather a little from each side just so I don't accidentally pull the string out, which I can do because this is really thin material. All right. Hold your arms out, Madame Blythe. What to come up with a name for her? All right, so this is going to be around in the front and then around in the back. Okay, so that gives me an idea. You know, I want to be able to then, uh, you know, stop the gathering process. And uh, what I'll do is put a seam in the in this back part up to about right here, because we'll have to have an opening to put the body through like that. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. This is why we call it Artistic Adventures, because as I was sewing that material, I decided I hated it. I hated it more than anything I've ever done in my life. <laughs> so I went back to this material, and I just doubled it. So it's two thicknesses, and I'm not going to make it quite as long in the back. And I ran another gathering thread, so ready to gather this. Just didn't like the way that looked. Okay, it's been a, a few days since I shot the first part of this video, and I, I don't know, I was just having trouble with my design idea, <laughs> and sometimes I have to just step back and think about it a while. Um, so one of the things I did do was uh, I did shorten this net skirt so that the tops of these would show, and I also, yikes, I know, but I did cut off part of this because it just wasn't it was too long I think it might have gone more with pants but uh, I want to show off these cute little stockings and boots and I think this is going to work better then I went through all kinds of uh, different materials I, I didn't like I just I don't know anyway then I forgot I had this it's like a fake leather look so what I did is I cut out two pieces by measuring, well, let me do it this way, by measuring a piece around to see how much I needed at the waist, and then I flared it out to take advantage of the hips, sewed it together on the sides, and then split the back. So what I want to do with this is just sort of have like a little overskirt over the netting, so the netting sort of hangs out, and this is a little bit tighter. Like that. All right. So we're going to put that on with some little tiny Velcro that I have and some glue. And while that's drying, I'm going to take some of that fake leather. I've cut in little tiny strips and put some little tiny buckles on it so that we can put these around, sort of hanging down on from her waist to her hip or whatever. A couple of these strips. And then I'm going to do some kind of bustier thing on the back. So, I'm going to put the... Let me just measure this to make sure it's the right length. So the nice thing about this fabric, too, is you don't have to hem it. So there's no raveling. trying to get keep the shirt in and, 
And then we're going to also put a little um, cincher around the waist. So this ended up being way too big anyway, and that's fine. We can easily cut this part off on both sides to make it a little bit smaller. But we do want it to overlap so we can use the Velcro. Alright, so if we fold that over like that, that works. Alright, so we're going to put the Velcro. I'll put one side. This is, I think I bought this on Etsy. I can't remember exactly. This is nice for dolls because it's really thin. Doesn't take up a lot of the costume space. Like some Velcro is a whole lot thicker than this. So I'm going to put this right there. Then I'm going to kind of eyeball where I'm going to put this strip on here. I don't want to push it together because it will pull the glue off. So you make sure you get the right side, the slick side, to put the glue on. The rough side is what will stick to that other piece. Alright, now this is going to go on the inside of the skirt. And I put it Oh, eighth of an inch over from the edge. All right. So I'm going to let that dry for a minute. While we're doing that, I'm going to try to thread this through these little tiny buckle. Actually, if I remember from the past when I did this, it helped to cut a point in the end so you could thread it through easier. pretty good. This is very thin material so that helps a lot. And then we're going to go into the other side. Hopefully. <laughs> ah, doesn't help that I have these fake nails on. I can never do, do it quite as well as I can when I have my natural nails. But the fake ones are so pretty. <laughs> oh. All right. There we go. That did it. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to leave this long, is we'll do kind of a fake belt. So we'll wrap this around. When we get the right length, we're just going to glue it so that it'll look like it's, you know, a belt, but it's it's not. We're going to cut off the excess so it'll look like that. Alright, so we got one of those. Let's go ahead and do the other one. Cut a little point. So we've got our two buckles ready. And now for the center, what I'm going to do is use this thin piece of leather. I hope this will be enough, <laughs> hopefully. 
because I want to cut it out just under the breast of the doll. And then have it go around her body. So, ew, I don't think that's going to work. Let's see, maybe this way it'll work. That might work. Okay. So I'm going to cut this. And then visualize how this will look. See, I want it to kind of go under the breasts like that. I hope you can see that. And then it would come up to a point in between So I'm just going to fold this in half so that the point, that way I'll cut them both the same size. Ooh. I think I have another piece of this leather if, if I mess this up. I just wanted to try to make use of this small piece if I could to not be wasteful. This kind of thin kid leather is kind of hard to find or it has been for me anyway. And I, I do end up using a lot of fa fake leather because it's just easier to work with and I don't really like to think that I'm using animal skin but sometimes you just can't get the look you want. We're getting there. We're getting there. No pattern again, but we're getting there. All right, now I want to cut down the side here just like this other side was cut to match it. I want to get a little more of a point here, so I'm going to cut into this a little bit more. pretty good. Try to use these smaller scissors that I can get into this area a little bit better. Also, it would really help if I put on my glasses. I'm just trying to even this up so it's rounded and not jagged. know what I mean? Okay, I'm going to work on this a little bit off camera to get it to shape I want and then I'll be right back. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right, we've been letting this dry. This is the little skirt and then I got the bustier or the, not really a bustier, but a cincher cut out for, to go over that and right under her breasts. Alright, and I got the Velcro put on that to go around it. And that's glued down and drying. So while we're waiting on that, we're going to attach some chain and some uh, brad. So they may, maybe they'll look a little bit like rivets, but this is br the brads that I bought at uh, Michael's. And they, they've got them in different colors. Uh, these are kind of a uh, dark bronzy color 
and I've got this chain that's a little bit of a dark bronzy color so I think I'll put those on the front of this device <laughs> center I guess we'll call it and uh, I'm going to put it kind of where the waist would be so we're going to drape that between these so what I do with these is I cut the little tail part off you can see that it has a little tail and uh, that's so that you could put this in something and it spreads there's two of them and spread like stick it through a paper or something and then spread those apart to hold it in but I'm going to get rid of them because I just want the top part I'm just going to use a little jewelry uh, making wire cutters you're going to either have on safety glasses or close your eyes so these little things don't pop out and hit you also you're going to need more than you really need because you will drop I have dropped so many of these things and lost them so I'm going to use four I started with five so far I've dropped one so I've already cut all the other ones I don't know why this is being so ornery the other ones were like oh yes just cut fine all right there I have them so I have my four brads uh, now and my spring popped out of my wire cutters all kinds of adventures today but that's okay I can get them back in there it's probably gonna pop out again but anyway um, so I want to drape this between two brads that's really kind of big though I don't know well yeah, it'd probably be all right so I'll probably cut it about right here and then I'll cut another one yeah always close your eyes when you're doing <laughs> yeah so I hope I have the right length what I want to do is glue a brad on either side it's a little bit tedious you just have to position it so kind of like that and then I'll glue a brad on top of each end like that's riveted through it to hold it in you know because steampunk is all about some rivets and to do this I'm going to use my pointy tool and some glue put this right above where that is so I kind of got it marked all right just do one at a time so we can make sure this is going to look right and then very carefully pick this up with some tweezers and put it on the glue Day. Same with this side. I just want to look and make sure I got it sort of even so it, you know, it looks sort of drapey. And then we're going to put another glob below it so we'll have like two rows of chains. It's just steampunk stuff, you know? Chains, rivets, leather, all that good stuff. All right, now let's try to put position this like we did the other one. I love it when a plan comes together. All right, we got our chain glued on. And I think I'm going to let that dry before I try to put the brads on because 
knowing me, I start trying to put the brads on and I'd pull up the chain and I'd be really upset then because this looks pretty nice. I like this. All right, so we'll come back in a minute and we'll put the brads down. I think this is pretty dry now, so we're going to attach the brads. We're going to do a couple of little accessory things while we're waiting for all that to dry. So I'm going to put a glob of glue there. Okay. Let go. There we go. And we're going to put a brad on there. Maybe. Come on, brads. Behave. There we go. And another one. You want a good glob so that the um, underside of the brad is hollow. Or not really hollow, but it's curved in on the bottom just as the top is curved out. So you want to make sure that the glue gets in there. And it'll hold that way better. Alright, let's put the last two on. Come on, turn over. There we go. Alright, I'll use the tweezers. I'm being mean. There we go. Looking good. Alright, so we've got those on. That's going to need to dry for a minute. That looks really good. So I thought while I'm working with this fabric, and because the gun belt's going to be part of the skirt and everything. I'm going to go and do this. I'm going to do a lot of other accessories in the next video. But you know, I told you I had this plastic. I had to pop out all the parts. This isn't all of them. We'll put it together later because i got to paint some of them. So basically what I did is take two pieces of this fake leather and put the um, gun down to measure how big to make the hol holster. And then I'm just going to glue the edges together on the so that uh, the right sides are out. So I'm just going to put a little glue around the edges. Maybe, well, I don't know. This glue is a little bit old, so it's not really thin. So I'm going to put it with the pointy tool just right at the edge. And then we'll press the other side on top of it, and then we'll have our holster. And that's going to be on another belt around her waist. So I don't get it too far in. I think I allowed enough space for the gun. Yeah. I kind of hate talking about guns today after all those shootings yesterday. That's really sad. And then I went to church today, and some guy has, this is Florida, so let me just tell you, almost everybody has a concealed carry permit. Some guy has a daggum pistol on in church. And I just, you know what, I'm sorry, but first of all, we don't need the gun in the church. And second of all, we especially don't need it the day after lots of people got killed with guns. I don't know. There's all kinds of people in this world, I guess. Just didn't hit me right today. Alright. So we're going to let that dry. And I uh, think I'll put a little trim on that to give it a little something extra. You know what I'm saying? A little extra, extra. I'll put this up at the top. This is just a little strip of fake leather. So it's kind of trimmed up. All 
All right, that looks good. Then we can just cut off the excess here. A tiny bit over here. And I'll put some on this side. This will just make it look a little bit more realistic. Since it's just glued together. That doesn't glue the top together so I can't get it <laughs> open. <laughs> Probably will. Oh well. We'll get it open. And set that aside to dry as well and I've already cut a strip to be the belt for that and I think I'm going to have to trim it just a little bit I think it's a little bit too thick at least at this one end anyway and then I have a little bit larger buckle than the ones I used on those little tiny strips and I'm going to use that because I think that'll be a nice contrast to the other small buckles. There we go. This is actually a buckle that I made out of clay. I made a a mold out of silicon and uh, made these with polymer clay and then painted them bronze. Because sometimes it's not easy to find these little small buckles. Anyway, I have a actually have a video on that on my channel if you're interested in seeing that. You have to have some of the buckles to begin with, but then if you want to make some, it's probably cheaper, you know, because I think a lot of them come from China, of course, and a lot of that's a lot of postage. Alright, so we got that buckle on there. And when we get ready to put all this together, we'll put the holster on. Okay. It's time to start putting this outfit on our girl. So we're going to start with the skirt. this on and let's see if I can get all this hair out of the way. Whew, so much hair. Hair everywhere. Always in the way too. Okay. See that that's a little bit uneven, so I'm going to trim that. Okay. And now we're going to put on the cincher. Blue holds. That looks good. 
and we got a couple of these buckles here I think that will look pretty good. I just want it sort of to hang loose on her hip from her waist. Put a little dab of glue on that. Do the other one. So it might make that one a little bit longer. Don't want them to be right on top of each other. Coming together, y'all. It's nice when you start seeing everything pan out. Like you kind of see it in your head and then you start making things and sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Where is that going to go? Alright, let's kind of stand her up, get some gravity going here. So we can see where these, yeah, I love that. I love how that looks. I'm going to move this over. I don't want the buckles to be right under each other. I'm going to be a little bit askew. All right. Now for our holster. kind of want that to hang down on the other side like that that looks good and another dab of glue E6000 getting a workout on this video. But that's some good stuff. So the gun is going to fit like that. So I guess we'll put the holster right there. So I didn't really need to put that trim on that other side. Oh well. So here's where we are. We've got the skirt done. We've got a couple buckle decorations. The bu buckle for the holster. We got the center with the blouse and some chain work there. So we're going to kind of leave this video and we'll come back for the next video and we'll do a hat. We're going to do some goggles and a couple of other things I want to give her like a uh, strap to go around right under the knee with one of the knives I have and then um, we'll put the coat on her 
and I have a I think I'm gonna do a shoulder strap for the sword that I have so it's really starting to look steampunky I'm loving it and I hope you guys are too If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me. And also, I hope that you will subscribe because we do have a lot coming up and I don't want you to miss a thing. Thanks and bye.